Good evening. Uh, welcome to uh, Vijaya Diagnostic Educational Webinar Series. Uh, we have been conducting this uh, series for nearly a couple of years and uh, we have been having a very good response and clinical radiologic discussions on various interesting topics. Uh, today's topic is the clinical radiologic evaluation of uh, unilateral tinnitus. And for this, uh, we have two very eminent faculty uh, who are participating. Chief guest is uh, Dr. S. Ravi Kumar. He is the founder and director of uh, Magnus uh, V. ENT Super Specialty Hospital. He has done his MBBS from Usmania and uh, MS ENT from Gandhi Medical College. And I can see that he has done uh, various uh, fellowships in India as well as abroad. And his area of interest is uh, micro ear surgery, endoscopic sinus surgery, and the snoring and the sleep surgeries. Uh, welcome, uh, Dr. Ravi Kumar. And then uh, we have uh, uh, Dr. Karthik, Rayasam Karthik. He has done his MBBS from Usmania Medical College and MD Radiology from PGI Chandigarh and uh, then DNB and FRCR. During his MBBS, I see that he is uh, nearly a pan gold medalist and he was also the best outgoing student uh, of MBBS of his batch. And he has also got the silver medal for the highest marks in radio diagnosis in PGI Chandigarh and uh, Arkot Gajrat gold medal for the highest marks in DNB. And he has written uh, three publications and uh, one chapter in the radiology textbook also. So welcome both of you. Uh, now tinnitus is a uh, abnormal sound which somebody hears without any external source. Sometimes I think uh, a lot of us uh, would have had uh, experienced this thing. But often those sounds are very feeble, very transient and we don't bother about them. They don't bother us and we forget about it. But in some patients, some people, uh, they can be very loud. They can be really disturbing. They can be very irritating and uh, annoying. And that's when they uh, come to the doctor for any help. So, Dr. Ravi, uh, whenever such a patient seeks the medical help, often I'm sure he goes to the ENT surgeon first. As an ENT surgeon, uh, please tell us uh, clinically how do you evaluate them? And then when do you decide that he needs the help from the radiology? And at that time, uh, what would be your expectations from the radiologist? Dr. Ravi. Sir. Uh, very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, thank you uh, for a nice introduction, Dr. Kishore, sir. And I'm very glad to be here in this evening today uh, to have an, uh, a good discussion about a burning topic, tinnitus, and which is one of the most common uh, problem faced by many, many people nowadays. We are uh, seeing that. Uh, sir, today, uh, nowadays, last five to ten years we have seen a uh, steep increase in the patients suffering from tinnitus mainly because of their uh, excessive usage of earphones and headphones and also uh, exposure to loud noises like exposure to dj or exposure to processions or some functions near to the speak, uh, speakers like that uh, there is very common exposure to the of the patients to the high sound intensity very near to their eardrums. So they are experiencing this tinnitus and hearing problems. And one more thing is some patients, whenever a patient comes to us with a tinnitus, usually the patient first he self-medicates generally. Like uh, he use, he goes to a medical shop, he uses some medicines. After that, if he could not uh, get any relief, then he will come to an ENT doctor. Usually, this tinnitus is around 15% of the population or uh, recently I, I have uh, seen an article, 15% of the whole world population is suffering from tinnitus wow. at, some time, at, at some time in their life, especially software engineers and engineering students. Because of their 
excessive usage of earphones and headphones. And usually, uh, these tinnitus patients, when, when they present to a doctor, like they go to an ENT doctor, uh, when they come to us, first we will evaluate their any other associated symptoms, like if they have any giddiness, if they have any hard of hearing in their ears, any discharge from the ear, uh, any pain in the ear like that, or any associated upper respiratory tract infections, uh, like sinusitis, something like that. Suppose if they are suffering from any upper respiratory tract infection, which is leading to tinnitus, then we will do an ear endoscopy. Then we can see whether the eardrum is infected, any pus in the ear or any uh, vascular malformations in the ear. Any uh, During uh, some patients, they develop pulsatile tinnitus, the, which uh, 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 in those conditions, they'll get like pulsatile sensations in their uh, ears, which matches to their heartbeats like that. So uh, these conditions can be seen in the uh, auto endoscopy and then we'll refer the patients to an audiologist where we can uh, assess their hearing levels and any abnormality of the uh, auditory nerve and also then we will send them to the radiologist to further investigate like usually there are two types of tinnitus subjective and objective in the subjective tinnitus, they would, there would be pulsatile and non-pulsatile tinnitus. Non-pulsatile tinnitus, one of the most common causes is like vestibular schwannomas, autosclerosis conditions like that. And vestibular schwannomas, usually uh, we advise MRI scans, uh, vestibular schwannomas and other uh, neoplasms uh, which are affecting uh, the CP angle uh, area. Then usually we uh, advise them MR, MRI brain with gadolinium scan like that and other conditions like uh, when we suspect any vascular malformations in the ear like a glomus tumor uh, or any vascular loops in glomus tumor usually we suggest both the CT scan and as well as MRI also uh, to know the exact extent of the uh, neoplasm infecting area so that we, uh, we can plan our surgery accordingly and also we can uh, preoperatively tell the patients what would be the output like sometimes lower cranial nerves have to be sacrificed during the surgery if there is an extensive lesion of the glomus so that is what we expect from a radiologist and like vascular loops sometimes uh, they are compressing the eighth cranial nerve in that case we'll uh, advise them MRI with uh, vascular flow studies usually and sometimes Paget's disease autosclerosis can be best uh, uh, studied in CT scans so like that we advise sir right so yeah so the patient goes to ENT surgeon ENT surgeon decides uh, uh, what could be the cause and accordingly he would ask for either CT or MR and uh, you would be expecting certain information, as you said, uh, lower cranial nerve uh, involvement or compression or displacements and all those things. So, Karthik, a lot of expectations of Dr. Ravi Kumar from you. Now, you, over to you and uh, please take over. Thank you, sir. Can you see my slide presentation, sir? LD, sir? Yes, yes. Okay, sir. Thank you for introduction, uh, uh, Kishore, sir. And uh, thank you for the clinical perspective, Ravi, sir. Today, my webinar topic is uh, radiological evaluation of unilateral tinnitus. Already, we had uh, the clinical perspective from Dr. Ravi, uh, Ravi, Ravi, sir. Now, we will see what are the objectives of this webinar to evaluate the causes of tinnitus and to assess the importance of imaging in tinnitus and discuss the imaging findings in uh, various uh, vascular and non-vascular lesions causing tinnitus. As we have already discussed, sound perceived without external stimulus is tinnitus as discussed by the ENT surgeon Dr. Ravi uh, sir the detailed clinical history and workup are required evaluation of coexistence symptoms like hearing loss vertigo ear discharge and headache should also be a part of the routine workup so as already discussed physical examination otoscopy and audiological testing are primarily done by the ENT, ENT doctors and then they refer us for the imaging which can be CT or an MRI 
So this is the basic auditory pathway, how the sound is uh, perceived and generated. So the organ of corti in the cochlea, this is the organ of corti, which is the microscopic image. We see the hair cells. From the vibrations of the tectorial membrane, the hair cells transform the sound energy into electrical impulses and they carry it via the cochlear nerve with the first relay in the cochlear nuclei. They cross the midline and they have a second relay in the olivary, inferior olive, superior olivary nuclei. Then they ascend upwards in the contralateral side along the lateral lemniscus and they relay in the inferior colliculus of the midbrain. And again, the next relay station is the thalamus in which the medial geniculate body is the next relay station. Finally, the auditory cortex, which is located in the temporal lobe, has this tonotopy, which means the each frequency is represented as a specific area. So this is how the entire auditory pathway happens. And auditory pathway is also uh, assessed by uh, electronic audio, uh, electronic potentials, uh, by, by the way the auditory impulses, these electrical impulses travel. So by understanding this basic auditory pathway, let us go into the classification of tinnitus. There are many approaches and classification to tinnitus. This is one of the uh, cl famous classification that is pulsatile and non-pulsatile tinnitus. In pulsatile tinnitus, we should see whether the tinnitus is pulse synchronous. If, the, if there is a pulse synchronous pulsatile tinnitus, so the most important causes are vascular causes like arterial bruise, venous humps, AV fistulas and vascular tumors. If it is a pulse asynchronous pulsatile tinnitus, we have to look for mechanical factors like middle ear myoclonus, palatal muscle myoclonus. Then coming to non-pulsatile tinnitus, the most important cause of non-pulsatile tinnitus is idiopathic or primary. The secondary causes as we have discussed, that is press by acusis, noise induced hearing loss recently with the advent of lot of earphones and headphones. Uh, middle ear impaction, uh, wax impaction, ear and ototoxic medications. The less common causes of secondary non pulsatile tinnitus include middle ear pathologies like otitis media with effusion, otox sclerosis, tympanic membrane perforation and uh, Paget's disease and inner ear pathologies like uh, vestibular schwannoma and head and neck trauma. So with this basic approach of uh, tinnitus, we, will, we have certain clinical scenarios like if there is acute onset of tinnitus, with headache, neck pain, and features of brain ischemia, it suggests an internal carotid artery dissection. In such case, it's perform an MRI and an MRI angio of the neck and head. If there is acute onset of tinnitus associated with headache, vertigo, and fever, and symptoms of brain ischemia, it could be a sign of venous thrombosis. Do an MR venography with MRI. Post-traumatic tinnitus is usually a dural AV fistula. Perform an MRI. MRA or digital subtraction angiography if MRI or MRA is negative. Tinnitus associated with headaches, decreased vision occurring in an obese female patient suggests a benign intracranial hypertension. So in that cases, please perform an MRI brain with MRV. Tinnitus associated with facial palsy usually suggests a vascular tumor or vascular loop of the facial nerve. In that case, MRI brain with T2 heavily titubated sequences like cis and dry would help. So other causes of tinnitus like uh, post uh, stepidectomy tinnitus usually think of a perilymphatic fistula and uh, tinnitus with anxiety and uh, ophthalmo uh, exophthalmia think about hyperthyroidism and in positional tinnitus uh, look for any compression by the styloid process and uh, tinnitus associated with uh, sensory neural hearing loss and abnormal evoked potential suggest a vestibular schwannoma in which a contrast enhanced MRI with heavily titubated sequences at the CP angle would help. So these are the basic scenarios in which the imaging plays a role. Now we will go into the non-pulsatile tinnitus. Non-pulsatile tinnitus is almost always subjective. So CEMRI, that is contrast enhanced MRI, is the only recommended when there is unilateral non-pulsatile tinnitus with focal neurological abnormalities or asymmetrical hearing loss. So why is the imaging indicated in non-pulsatile tinnitus? Because it is to rule out a CP angle lesion. The most important uh, the, uh, pathology which should be ruled out in a case of unilateral non-pulsatile tinnitus is a CP angle lesion like a vestibular schwannoma. So before going into the uh, actual pathology, this is the cis or drive sequence, which is a heavily T2 weighted sequence, which is usually per performed for assessing seventh and eighth nerve complexes. In this, as we see in the arrow A, the anterior nerve is the seventh nerve. 
the posterior nerve is the cochlear nerve this is the internal auditory meatus this is the pons this is the middle cerebellar peduncle and these are the cerebellar hemispheres so this is the basic anatomy of seventh eighth nerve complexes in the cp angle region so in the case of vestibular schwannoma we see that there is a lesion which is t2 hyper intense which is extending into the internal auditory canal on the right side and on post contrast images they show evid enhancement with typical ice cream cone morphology extending into the internal auditory canal this is a case of a, a 34 year female presenting with right sided hearing loss tinnitus and imbalance so this was proven on mri to be a vestibular schwannoma the other important uh, lesion which can present with tinnitus and sensorineural hearing loss is a meningioma at the cp angle unlike the meninge unlike the cp angle schwannoma meningiomas usually do not ex extend into the uh, internal auditory canal and they typically have this dural tail sign which is the enhancement of the lesion which is attached to the dura and they are extra axial and they cause mass effect over the pons from which the 7th 8th nerve complexes arise so they will typically present with uh, sensory neural hearing loss and uh, tinnitus and imbalance so this is the case of cp angle schwannoma now the most important cause uh, is pulsatile tinnitus the percentage of patients with pulsatile tinnitus is roughly 10 to 15% of all the tinnitus so three important causes of pulsatile tinnitus are vascular tumors vascular malformations and fistula and vascular anomalies we will see each of them very briefly so in the vascular tumors we have glomus jugulare glomus tympanicum and glomus jugulo tympanicum so glomus jugular tumor is a paraganglionoma which is centered in the jugular foramen and uh, there is intact jugular plate it won't extend to the middle ear canal so on a ct here we see that there is permeative lytic destruction in the centered in the petrous temporal bone and jugular foramen region on an mri we see a t1 t2 hyper to intermediate uh, intensity lesion with numerous small dot like foci showing evid post contrast enhancement so this is a classical case of glomus jugular tumor which is on the right side in this young 27 year old female patient when we see glomus tympanicum on a routine ct scan we see that there is some soft tissue which is located lateral to the cochlear promontory which is very non specific so in concordance with the clinical findings always do an mri also in this case so in the mri there is this t2 intermediate intensity lesion which is showing post contrast enhancement so this was and there is an intact jugular plate also here the jugular plate is intact so this is a proven bio, uh, histological proven case of glomus tympanicum affecting the right middle ear the next spectrum is glomus jugulo tympanicum which is nothing but the glomus jugular tumor which is spreading into the middle ear so here we have permeative lytic osseous margins on a ct scan and uh, on the mri we see that uh, the spread will be also seen to the middle ear apart from involving the uh, jugular foramen region so the best imaging modality to detect uh, and to characterize the extent of glomus jugular tympanicum is a contrast enhanced mri of the skull base and the temporal bone along with a screening ct these two modalities are best to depict the extent of the lesion involvement of the other cranial nerves and uh, to uh, which will help to plan the operative uh, and the surgical management the next important causes of tinnitus is atrovillous malformation usually they are idiopathic and uh, or post traumatic what is an arterial arteriovenous malformation it is an abnormal communication between arteries and vein with the nidus here in this case who is a 35 year old male patient he presented with pulsatile tinnitus and uh, uh, vague symptoms pertaining to the le uh, left lower limb he see that there is a bunch of uh, flow voids in the right temporal lobe with multiple arterial feeders and apart from that there is even vascular uh, venous uh, uh, feeders uh, draining venous veins also seen in this uh, large uh, av uh, arteriovenous malformation the patient was taken up for the dsa and uh, embolized with onyx and glue the other important cause of uh, unilateral pulsatile tinnitus is arteriovenous fistula what is a fistula fistula is an abnormal communication between an artery and vein without an idus so in this case there's a 
young patient who had a trauma after which he is presented with pulsatile tinnitus we see that there are a number of vessels surrounding the uh, right petrous right petrous right and uh, cervical carotid internal carotid artery with number of venous draining veins on the right side so the patient was taken up for the, for the dsa we see that there is a abnormal communication between the uh, uh, internal carotid artery and with subsequent opacification of the veins suggestive of an arteriovenous fistula the patient was taken up for embolization the other causes which cause tinnitus are high riding jugular bulb high riding jugular bulb with intact sigmoid plate is evident by the extension of the jugular bulb above the level of internal auditory meatus and it is separated by a bony plate so this is the normal anatomy this is the carotid canal this is the middle ear cavity this is the jugular bulb and this is the sigmoid bone plate which usually separates from the uh, the jugular bulb from the middle ear cavity so in case of high riding jugular bulb we see the jugular bulb above the level or at the level of internal auditory canal so with intact sigmoid plate so this is a high riding jugular bulb next is jugular bulb dehiscence so here we have uh, there is no bony plate that is a sigmoid bony plate which is uh, separating the jugular bulb from the middle ear cavity is absent and we see that the wall is dehiscent so we see that this abnormal soft tissue density in contiguity with the internal jugular vein with lack of normal sigmoid plate and uh, which is protruding into the medial aspect of the uh, middle ear suggestive of a jugular bulb dehiscence the other important cause of uh, pulsatile tinnitus in some patients is a diverticulum here diverticulum is nothing but it is a waste like protrusion from the jugular bulb projecting into the bony uh, inter inner ear so this is a waste like protrusion into of the jugular bulb which is projecting into the uh, inner ear which can cause sometimes uh, pulsatile tinnitus the other causes of pulsatile tinnitus include sigmoid plate dehiscence here we can see on the right left side that the sigmoid plate is intact on the right side however we see that the sigmoid plate is dehiscent and the sigmoid sinus is uh, in direct contiguity with the posterior mastoid air cells so this patient was having tinnitus on the right side so the, he was taken up for a ct which showed that the sigmoid plate was dehiscent so a contrast study was done which showed that the sigmoid sinus itself is extending into the posterior mastoid region through this dehiscent area which was the cause of uh, uh, the tinnitus in this case so this was a case of sigmoid plate dehiscence Uh, the other rare causes of uh, pulsatile tinnitus include persistent stepedial artery in persistent stepedial artery we see that there is a vascular channel here arising from the temporal uh, uh, carotid artery which courses medial to the facial nerve and uh, it exits it parallel to the facial nerve and it and it exits the cranial middle cranial fossa where it becomes the middle meningeal artery so persistent stepedial artery is an anatomical variation in that case the typical foramen spinosum is absent through which the middle meningeal artery actual uh, courses instead we see a small vascular twig arising from the carotid artery which is traversing along the medial wall of the inner ear parallel to the course of the seventh nerve it exits the a mid, uh, temporal bone into the middle cranial fossa where it becomes the middle meningeal artery so this is a case of persistent stepedial artery presenting as pulsatile tinnitus next is aberrant internal carotid artery course so here we see that this is the internal carotid artery which there is a dehiscent there is a dehiscence of the bony plate and this internal carotid artery is coursing into the uh, mid tympanic cavity here along the medial wall and uh, it is lateral to the cochlear promontory the arrows depicts that this entire internal carotid artery is having an apparent course with dehiscent wall so such cases should be handled with very uh, with very uh, uh, this imaging should very helpful so a contrast study on an mri angio would help uh, to delineate that this is an internal carotid artery but not a tumor like lomas very important uh, finding and uh, unnecessary provocation would lead a catastrophic hemorrhage in this place as we have already discussed another causes of uh, uh, tinnitus would include vascular loops at the cp angle which are compressing or indenting the 7th 8th nerve complexes so here in the first uh, uh, image we see that the ica this is the ica flow void which is causing compression of the cochlear nerve with 
deformity here. So this patient was having a pulse tinnitus. So this was a loop of the ICA, which is causing neurovascular conflict at the CP angle. Here also we see that the ICA loop is extending into the internal carotid artery, internal auditory canal, causing uh, abutting of the abutment of the cochlear nerve. So this was also a case of type 3 ICA loop, which was causing neurovascular conflict with subsequent tinnitus. So this is an interesting case. She's a young female patient who presented to the emergency department with sudden onset right-sided hearing loss, tinnitus and vertigo. So this was the a scan which was done that time. They saw that there was a small uh, T2 hypointense lesion in the uh, internal auditory canal, which was showing post-contrast enhancement. So this the page, they, they thought that this was a small uh, schwannoma in the internal auditory canal and they suggested a follow-up. The patient came after around 10 days. See on the T1 weighted images, the lesion now has become hyper intense, showing a mild post, showing decreased post-contrast enhancement. After about two months, this is the morphology of the lesion. The lesion is showing a typical flow-void-like appearance on the T1 weighted images. On the post-contrast images, uh, the, there is only peripheral enhancement of the lesion. So the clinicians and the ENT surgeons and neurosurgeons suspected that this might be a vascular aneurysm. So they performed a DSA. This is the run which shows that uh, there is this abnormal outpouching arising from the right ICA which is protruding into the internal uh, auditory canal. So this was nothing but an ICA pseudo aneurysm. ICA aneurysm, which is causing the uh, uh, mimicking a vestibular schwannoma and uh, which has presented acutely because of bleed. So these, they embolize this artery and this is the post embolization, which showed that the aneurysm is not opacified. So please always be careful of uh, interpreting the MR images, especially when there is a uh, enhancing lesion, isolated enhancing lesion, do a follow-up study. Sometimes there may be an ICA aneurysm sitting there, which can mimic a vestibular schwannoma. So do a follow-up study or a digital subtraction angio, which would help to pick up such rare aneurysms in the CP angle. The other miscellaneous causes of tinnitus uh, would include middle ear pathologies, like the most important thing would be a carotid dissection. So whenever we see a young patient who is having a trauma or a, a neck, a sudden cervical extension and flexion, presenting with symptoms of brain ischemia and a sudden onset tinnitus, here we see that there is a dissection of the left uh, internal ICA with a dissecting flap and extensive an eccentric uh, mural thrombus. This was a case of carotid dissection, which presented with tinnitus and vertigo and uh, scenes of brain ischemia. The other uh, cause it would include a superior semicircle canal dehiscence. So we see in this coronal images, we see that the superior semicircular canal is having bony dehiscence in the superior wall with the normal uh, lateral me and the medial walls. So superior semicircular canal dehiscence can also present with tinnitus at some point of time. The other causes of uh, tinnitus are otosclerosis, especially middle-aged female patients who presented with conductive hearing loss. Look, the Usually the imaging modality of choice is HRCT temporal bone. We see that there are demineralizing plaques located at the fistula anterior fenestrum. This is a case of uh, retrofenest uh, fenestral otosclerosis. Sometimes we see extensive uh, cochlear and uh, retrofenestral otosclerosis as depicted like a uh, halo and uh, this areas of demineralization surrounding the cochlea. In that case, the patient will have mixed conducting as well as sensory neural hearing loss. So in the case of otosclerosis, uh, patient presenting with hearing loss, tinnitus, a CT scan is the best modality to evaluate the demineralizing blocks, involvement of the cochlea and about looking at the status of stepis and the other ossicles. Uh, HRCT temporal bone is the imaging modality of choice. This was a very rare case. This case, the patient presented with tinnitus and left-sided ear pain. So this, the, the HRCT temporal bone showed that there was abnormal hyperostosis of the left temporal bone with soft tissue uh, opacification of the mastoid cells and middle ear cavity. So they were initially thinking of otomastoiditis, but this amount of hyperostosis was very unusual for the in a case of uh, otitis media with uh, 
mastered at this. So they did a contrast enhanced MRI for this case. In the contrast enhanced MRI, the entire soft tissue in the middle ear was showing enhancement. So they thought that this, this was not a case of any middle ear uh, otitis media with mastered otitis. Instead, they did a tissue biopsy and they and it was proven to be a meningioma in the uh, temporal bone. So this was a very rare case of intraosseous temporal meningioma presenting as tinnitus. So we see that there is a lot of hyperostosis with enhancement of the uh, middle ear soft tissue component. So please look at this hyperostosis, which is a very important uh, uh, secondary sign of meningiomas. Uh, this was a case of chronic uh, right ear discharge. Patient presented with uh, tinnitus and imbalance. So this is the left temporal bone, which was pretty normal. In the right temporal bone, we see that there is loss of normal anatomical landmarks, ossicular erosion, and soft tissue attenuation, which is occupying the uh, epitympanum, auditus, and the mastered region. Apart from that, we see that uh, the lateral semicircular canal bony wall is dehiscent. So this was a case of labyrinthine fistula with automastoidectomy secondary to a large cholesteatoma in the middle ear and the mastered region. So this, these cholesteatomas are chronic otitis media with uh, mastered otitis can also present with tinnitus in chronic cases when these erosions of the lateral semicircular canals and this extensive bony remodeling changes occur. And once evaluating mid -ear, uh, obese patients, especially female patients who present with uh, visual disturbances and tinnitus, uh, uh, the usual uh, pathology to be ruled out is intracranial hypertension. In intracranial hypertension, we see that there is uh, tortuosity of the perioptic nerve sheets and there is empty cella and there is stenosis at the transverse sigmoid uh, sinus junctions, usually on both sides. So this is a case of classical idiopathic intracranial hypertension, which can present as a tinnitus and a blurring of vision and photophobia. An MRI brain with MRV would, is the ideal modality of uh, evaluating uh, uh, idiopathic intracranial hypertension. So just I'll briefly summarize. Many patients will have no radiological abnormalities that can explain tinnitus. This is the usual dictum. So when you, whenever we have a non-pulsatile tinnitus, contrast enhanced MRI brain is the usual investigation of choice to rule out a CP angle mass lesion. In a case of pulsatile tinnitus, depending upon the presentation, HRCT temporal bone or CT or MR angiogram, subsequent DSA and MRI skull base are the modality of choices. So in, in every case, it is a multidisciplinary approach. Uh, clinical radiological correlation and a systematic evaluation would help uh, to ascertain the cause of tinnitus. So with this brief presentation, I conclude my webinar today. Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Karthik, that was a beautiful presentation. Very, very informative. You started with the definition and then you showed us the auditory pathway. And then you told us the clinical classification and approach to the tinnitus. And then you also showed various uh, lesions which can be shown by radiology such as tumors, vascular, bony lesions, some miscellaneous causes and also post-operative uh, causes. So you nicely covered most of the conditions. And finally, nicely you summarized that radiology is not everything. There will be a lot of uh, no patients who will not have abnormal radiologic findings. right? So that was a nice message you conveyed at the end. So that was a really useful presentation. So Dr. Ravi, uh, any comments on uh, uh, Karthik's presentation? Any questions you have for him? I congratulate, first of all, Dr. Karthik for an extensive presentation. You covered almost everything in uh, imaging related to tinnitus. That's a, an excellent Thank presentation, you. Dr. Karthik. Thank you. Uh, really, you have shown some uh, very rare conditions like carotid artery, abnormal carotid artery bulging into the middle ear tympanum, like meso tympanum. That's, uh, that would be disastrous to the patient if the doctor would have uh, uh, done the surgery, uh, thinking of uh, some glomus uh, tumors. Huh? And also, that's a good thing. You have shown some carotid dissection, superior semi descent. Uh, you have shown extensive radiological uh, this thing. Thank you very much for that. Uh, what about, I, I have a small question for that. 
what is the imaging uh, which is the imaging of choice related to multiple sclerosis uh, causing tinnitus imaging is mri mri yeah. brain with thinning of the spine with contrast yes sir okay paget's disease ct sir hrct temporal bone ct ct is better okay okay thank you dr kathi an excellent thank present you, thank you sir thank you sir right so now i have a question for both of you because both of you are expert and uh, authority on tinnitus uh, let's say 100 patients come with tinnitus and uh, you do audiologic examination normal and uh, karthik does uh, extensive radiologic work up everything is normal so such patients how do you treat them finally sir usually that we classify into idiopathic tinnitus that covers almost 50 to 60% of the cases uh, uh, which has many aspects there could be some psychological aspects we tell the patient to get used to it of course we write some medicines which improve the neurological trans, uh, uh, permeability and all transmission and all but even then those patients more of psychological as- aspect we give them tinnitus retraining therapy like masking and uh, sometimes we use hearing aids for them also psychologically we counsel them to neglect tinnitus suppose if it comes diagnosis as idiopathic tinnitus the more you concentrate on the sound which is generated in the like they are able they are hearing uh, the more you concentrate in the more the patient will feel the intensity of the sound if they neglect it if they divert themselves from that sound definitely there would be some uh, uh, like uh, uh, easy going with the tinnitus right right and also we use tinnitus maskers okay right right yeah so yeah that, that's good i mean um, i do see that a uh, lot of young generation and uh, these a uh, lot of people you uh, know Uh, have those uh, earphones and all those things i think it should be conveyed to them that they should minimize the use of those things because uh, when they are you know, uh, know we do see you know in the newspapers and in the tvs that while you know having those things they were crossing the road and they didn't see the vehicle and uh, you know they met with an accident and you know so many things so i think uh, it should be conveyed to them that uh, they should minimize the use of these headphones and uh, you know not uh, get into complications and uh, i i don't really have anybody asking any questions in the chat box so yeah so that's it i think uh, thanks uh, thank you very much dr ravi for thank you sir thank you very much um, webinar and uh, spending your precious time uh, i know you are an extremely busy person uh, so thanks a lot for you know sharing your thoughts and your knowledge with us kartik it was an excellent presentation and as usual it was really very really fantastic so i thank everybody and i thank uh, vijaya diagnostic management and my technical team who made it possible so thank you very much and now i think we will close the session thank you thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir. we feel we feel privileged to be on the same screen with you sir that is sure sir a senior most uh, radiologist like you thank you very much for the opportunity thank you sir thank, thank you sir thank you thank you sir